You're listening to another episode of the Anavivo podcast. Thank you for your time. Oh, yeah. Create this beat. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Anavivo podcast. I'm your host, Tim C. Miller, upward living in Latin. And we're here on beautiful Whidbey Island, Washington, as is normal. I'm here with my favorite host of the morning. Actually, it's uh, just now the afternoon. So welcome to the show, Mr. John Gary. Hey, thanks, Tim. <laughs> what a do? <laughs> <laughs> what up, what up? What up? <laughs> So we're here in the home office. The girls are out uh, hanging out, and the door's open. I don't actually, I didn't actually close the door for the podcast, so they're going to hear. And you, listeners, may hear some background information as well as they're talking. <laughs> Thankfully, these are dynamic mics, so if I look away like this, you don't really hear it, or if I need to cough, but when I come back, it picks up the sound in front of me. So, so today we're going to be talking about your passion and love for cookies and where this came from, where it stemmed from. Your favorite kind? Do you have a favorite brand, favorite flavor? All of those things, all things cookies. Yeah, so that's uh, that's a that's a deep question for me because I really love <laughs> oh, this cookies. This is really deep. <laughs> yeah, um, I'd say my passion had come from when I was a kid, but ironically enough, one of a uh, <laughs> uh, one of one of the funniest things that ever happened to me, and uh, I'd say in my life, and also tied in with my career in the Navy. So I had a sailor, he was my Alpo, my assistant leading petty officer, and he loved to dip. And I told him one day, I said, hey man, I said, why don't you stop dipping? Like, you need to stop. And he's like, I'll tell you what, he's like, why don't you stop eating cookies? (laughs) And I said, touche, because it's not going to happen. Well played, sir. (laughs) It's not. And that was, what, maybe eight years ago. And uh, to this day, I'm I'm a cookie connoisseur. Mm, A connoisseur. That has with it some sort of connotation of really knowing your product. Yes. So do you have a favorite product? Oh man, a favorite product. If you're like the Samier, what are those called? Samier of wine, but for cookies. Yes, <laughs> like, yes. Uh, a with your font, isn't a, it? A, 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 yeah. With your steak savant. tonight, sir, might I recommend the macadamia <laughs> chocolate? <laughs> Otis Spunkmeyer. <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, I'm, it's basic, but at the same time, it's, um, it's traditional, like your chocolate chip cookie. Ah, your chocolate the chip old cookie. classic. Yes, the, okay. the classic. And uh, for me, I'd say my favorite type of cookie, my favorite chocolate chip cookie would have to be, uh, oh man, is is the brand called Otis? <laughs> yeah, Otis yes. Spunkmeyer. Otis Spunkmeyer. Those are, they come in the little bag or they make them, I think they used to make them in like high school or something fresh and you would buy them. Mm-hmm. So they have the them. They have them on base over at the, um, the bowling alley. What's that uh, called? Kegler's Kegler's. Yes. Yeah. At Kegler's and nice. Oh man. Uh, two for a dollar 50. You, oh. you gotta get two, you know, it's one for 99 or two for a dollar 50. I'm getting two. And I'm eating both of them. <laughs> You're eating both. Not for the kids. No, not for your no, wife. no, 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 no. <laughs> they'll, they'll get chicken fingers and <laughs> French fries. I get the cookies. Though. Okay. Okay. All right. Nice. Well, that's good to know. The the local spot here on Whidbey Island, Kegler's chocolate chip cookies, Otis Spunkmeyer, two for a dollar fifty. Two for a dollar fifty. Yep. Okay. But they're only open specific days. I think their schedule is changing. Uh, I do not work for them, so <laughs> I am in no way sponsored by them. I am not forced to say this. <laughs> yes. Yes. No. Not you at probably all. could be. You need a T shirt that's says Otis Spunkmeyer down their sleeve. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure I could. I, I'm. I'm sure I've paid off. Um, maybe some of the CEO's houses with all the cookies I've had. That's a good segue into retirement here. As you look down that road, retiring mm-hmm. from your uh, uh, pretty incredible naval career, have you ever thought about getting into cookie baking and <laughs> opening a storefront so that you can? Although, would you eat your own? <laughs> would you eat yourself out of? <laughs> yes. So, um, <laughs> there, there's a there's a there's a Biggie song. Uh, I want to say I'm not gonna say. Well, okay, I'm not gonna say the name of the song because it, it is uh, provocative. Or, uh, okay, sure. Um, this is a safe space. Oh, it, it's a safe space. Yeah, okay, yeah. so it's the um, the Ten Crack Commandments, <laughs> and number uh, I think it was number one, uh, which is never get high on your own supply. Ah, smart, and I, smart. I think I would get high on all the cookies that yeah. I would make. Yeah. So um, 
No, I would not be able to do a uh, a cookie store. I have thought about doing a taco shop, Ooh. Um, but I would probably eat the tacos as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there's a point where you have to like you have to eat some of it to know the product and be be um, uh, skilled in what you're making. But at the same time, you've got to you don't want to eat yourself out of <laughs> out of the supply. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Um, let's see. But talking about retirement. Uh, when it does come, I do know that as much as I don't want to work and my wife, uh, my wife is, uh, anti me not working. Um, because ironically enough, you and I were talking about this. If she were to not work, it would, she would have the expectations of cooking, cleaning, right, right. um, maintaining the household. <clears throat> and I would have to commit the same thing to her and we're talking this this would be in what six and a half years yeah so i'd be close to 40 no i I would be 40 i'd be 40 years old kids would be uh one kid in high school the other kid uh late elementary Mm -hmm. and uh, i'd be putting on my apron uh wearing uh some uh, some tight spandex (laughs) and uh having uh embarrassing your kids at high school oh 100 (laughs) percent. i'd I'd wear a big old sombrero uh the stuff that my dad did to me that to this day at the football game oh yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) john luke is that your dad no don't know the man (laughs) as i have a picture of my son on my t-shirt oh man yeah yeah it's like it's it's, Uh, what charming bonding moments oh and and then it's to me it was one of those like man i was so embarrassed of my dad but now i look back um and he's thank god he's still alive Mm. um but i look back and i'm like i wish i would have valued um those goofy moments with him uh, yeah because as much as he did embarrass me the reality behind it was I don't think he meant it. That's just yeah. who who he is yeah. and who who yeah who it wasn't he is. it wasn't malicious. It no, was, it was all in with the point of fun, even yeah. though it was embarrassing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because in the reality, it's it's him. Like like if anyone's gonna be <clears throat> get embarrassed, it's gonna be the person who's doing this, wearing the goofy sombrero, <laughs> you know, wearing the short shorts, wearing the flip flops <laughs> on a Christmas night. Um, yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, good, good, positive memories and aspirations to look forward to as the uh, as the kids get older. I think we're about the same. I've got seven years left to retire. My kids will be. I'll be forty. Also, what am I? I'm thirty four now, and yeah, so about that age. Kids will be in high school and just getting ready to start going through and graduating. So I've got a sort of plan, pre plan. <laughs> what am I going to do to make a lasting impact mm-hmm. for my children? <laughs> Mm-hmm. What kind of dad at the games am I going to be? I'm you know? trying to think how old I am right now. I'm tomorrow's I, tomorrow's my birthday, dude. Yeah, tomorrow you're my over birthday. here at my house, yeah, podcasting with me. Pre birthday, tomorrow's your birthday. I know Happy I could be birthday, anywhere man. in the world, but I'm here at Tim's. Oh man, yeah. it, well, what a blessing. Let, let's let's just say he lured me in with his uh, <laughs> his lemon flavored uh, cookie dough um, mm, cookies, straight cookie dough, yeah. not even cooked. Not even cooked. I said sold. I'll be there. Uh, I'll be there. <laughs> on my way. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing for your birthday? On it? I guess it's a Tuesday. It's a so Tuesday. That's yeah. Kinda... Um, turning up on a Tuesday. <laughs> turn, no, turn I'm going to turn turn turned down. Up? Oh, no, turn down. Okay. Turn down. How uh, old will you be? I think 30, 34. Well, hold on, hold on. Welcome to the no, 34 thir- Club. 33. 33? Yes. Okay. Because yeah, I'm awesome. 90s. You're 89, right? 89, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm 90s. 33. Okay. Man, that's awesome. Uh, what a good year. It is a good year. That's the year Christ died. When? <laughs> when he was 33 years oh, old. Oh, I thought, <laughs> I, thought, I thought you said 1990. <laughs> no. I was like, wait, no. No. Can we edit this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do we edit this episode? <laughs> no, that's the year he supposedly, according to historical um, scriptural documents, he he gave up his life on the cross when he was 33 years old. He, he started his ministry at 30, at 30 yes. had three years of ministry, and then uh, died on the cross at 33. And so when mm-hmm. I was 33, I was, I was like, all right, Lord, well, you can take me home too if you'd like. <laughs> this is a good time. Mm-hmm. And then he did not, and I was like, okay, well, then I guess there's more for me to do here, which is, which is a blessing also. But it's kind of, Paul says it in um, the New Testament, he says that as much as basically... Uh, um, as much as I would love to be uh, in heaven right now, it is far better for me to remain behind for the sake of the his audience in that case. 
who he was writing to, to remain behind and encourage them and help them through life and, and, um, build up the body of Christ. And I think about that a lot in terms of like our purpose here on earth. Like, why am I here? Why am I doing this stuff? What is my, is it, is it the Navy? Is it this real estate? Is it, you know, any other thing I actively do to get money or is it my family? Is it the things that are actually important to my core values and the things that are going to live long beyond me, you know? And what does that look like? So that got deep real quick, but no, um, no, I, th- I think it's we good. should have a plate of cookies as we <laughs> talk, you know, <laughs> like, no, everybody take a cookie while you ask. No, some then I, w- I wouldn't even be able to talk. I just have <laughs> you would just hear num, 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 <laughs> cookie monster. Yeah. Yeah. Cookies. <laughs> um, the audience no, no, that. no, it's, it's good to be deep like that. And, uh, talking about, um, talking about leaving and, uh, going away. Cause death is inevitable. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we know two things, uh, we're, we're born and then we die. Yeah. You know, in in life, right? Um, after life, we pray that we go to heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, and as long as we um, commit and believe that uh, Jesus Christ did die mm-hmm. on the cross and gave His life um, for our sins, yeah. Then um, if we have that mindset, you know, we go to heaven, right? Um, but and there's that there's that like yes, I would I would love to go to heaven. Um, but I know that my my kids need me right now. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, my Very wife, true. my wife needs me. Yeah. And uh, there was a point where uh, where I uh, I was ready to go, and uh, it wasn't even had nothing to do with God, had nothing to do with heaven. It just had everything to do with um, mm. I don't want to live anymore. Yeah. And uh, I I do believe that um, that God worked uh, uh, worked a miracle through me because. Mm. Um, uh, I mean, we could talk about this a whole other This could be a whole other episode. Yeah, this, yeah. this could be a whole another episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it was it was one of those like, like God, if this is the time, then let it be. Yeah. And sure enough, it, it was not the time. And he he made it. Um, uh, he made a big statement that night. Uh, and I'm still here, and I'm thankful that I'm here sitting mm. in front of you. Amen. Yeah, I'm thankful too. I get to know you, and you helped me through chief season. So, oh yeah, literally only here because I had dress blues from you for fifty bucks at the exchange versus, I mean, at the thrift store versus you know three hundred dollars at the mm-hmm. exchange. I, I, and- I saved him three hundred bucks. So yeah. I, I'm I'm expecting three hundred dollars <laughs> of cookies. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> with the cookies or cookie dough <laughs> coming for the next episode. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, there's there's um, yeah. We could we could be really jovial about it too but there's some some levity in that situation you know in terms of where we just get ourselves in these dark dark places and it literally takes a miracle because we're just not thinking right you know we Mm want to we want to end our life thinking it makes other people better or whatever but it's it's almost our own pride and satan yeah uh, trying to take us out of the fight you know before our time and and your kids would have been absolutely devastated your wife devastated you know and so there's and and all your friends and everybody so there's there's obviously it's good <laughs> that you're here and that everybody's here uh, that has gone through something like this. But um, praise be to God for for the grace and mercy He gives us every day to be able to do this normally. So yeah, I'm glad you're here as well. Yeah, uh, and hey, thank thanks Tim, and it's uh, it's good to bring up Satan as well because um, he's he's real. Yeah, and um, he's he's he is powerful as well, and um, it's it's so much easier to uh to fall for um to fall for the bad things yeah you know to to just not follow god because right. if you if you don't follow god you're automatically going towards um towards hell and yeah you're yeah. you're you're leaning towards satan right um and uh yeah and i mean just as much as god wants us satan satan wants us as well oh yeah yeah and we blame it a lot on, you know, the drugs or the alcohol or the depression or the medication or whatever. But those are the symptoms of the real spiritual problem going on behind the scenes, you know, that we're trying to medicate or we're trying to pacify or we're trying to fill that void that is a, a, a spiritual cause, not the symptoms of what we're trying to, you know, make ourselves feel better with. So it's good to be real and vulnerable about that kind of stuff. I think that's that helps with the understanding the problem so now we can discuss it more freely and then really get on the side of healing through that yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. But like you said, maybe another episode when you're back, maybe at, after your birthday, when you can actually go enjoy your birthday first, and then we'll come back and talk about those deeper. <laughs> yes, uh, with some chocolate chip Otis. Oh, oh uh, yes, cookies. yes, yes, absolutely. Well, yeah. that's good. I appreciate your time today as, as brief as it was, just about 15 minutes on the air today. And uh, I thank our audience, as always, for listening. Do you have a dad joke you want to end us out with today, or you want to save that for the... Uh, Longer episode. You got oh, something I, good. I, I got a. I got a chiefly joke. Oh, a chiefly one. Right. Navy, <laughs> Navy chief, Navy pride. Oh, here we go. Here it okay. goes. All right. What did the supply chief say when uh, when he came out the closet? Oh no. What did the supply chief chief say? He said supplies. Supplies. I'm Henry, and I'm six years old, and I approve this message. That's hilarious. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. As all, oh look who just showed up the star of the show yes. okay all, all right, right. We're, we're gonna have to we should probably, her next time yeah we should probably pause it here so they can go have uh so you guys can go have some fun yeah i need to go get my truck actually all right well as my kids would say thanks for listening thank you for listening to another episode of the anna vivo podcast we welcome your feedback and ideas. You can learn more about us by simply Googling the word Anavivo. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. I am a licensed real estate broker with Compass Real Estate and a nationwide real estate matchmaker. We consult with you for free, find and vet the right real estate professional that specializes in the area and niche you need, are paid by that professional, and they get clients like yourself who want and need their unique specialty or winning track record. If you or someone you know is in the market to buy or sell real estate anywhere in the U.S., don't simply web search the highest paying advertiser. Let us use our licensed experience to find and vet the real and best professional for you. It costs you nothing but a phone call or email with me and it saved my clients financially and emotionally. I'd be honored to serve and you can reach me direct by email at tim.c.miller at outlook.com. And as always, to God be the glory.